You know, for two guys who live in California, you'd think we know how to dress for the beach a little better. I got this. Fish! In Hawaii. Because if you're gonna eat seafood, you might as well go to the middle of the ocean to get it. Today on Worth It, we're gonna be trying three fish dishes at three drastically different price points to find out which fish dish is the most worth it at its price. Fish dish, bish. Look at Hawaii. That's actually the ocean. That's Hawaii. We are on the island of Oahu. Oh. Ahu. In the city of Honolulu. And that's where we're pretty much gonna be sticking for this journey. Maybe we'll come back some other day, check out the other islands. First off, we're going to a place called Ahi Assassins. What are we gonna be having there? Okay! Wish I brought my swim trunks. I didn't pack for this, really. I'm Erica, I'm the co-owner of Ahi Assassins. I'm Josh, co-owner of Ahi Assassins. This is traditional poke here that we do. What is poke? In Hawaiian just means to dice or cut. Poke for us is fresh fish, lightly sauced. We want to bring through the taste of the fish. Majority of the time, if you come in here in our first hours, you'll see guys breaking down fish right here. How long have you been fishing? I Fisherman? think I was made on a boat. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly <laughs> born right off of a boat. On my mom's side, I come from a long line of Hawaiian fishermen. So did you always think that you would be a fisherman for for work. It was my dream. I read The Old Man in the Sea and I'm like, that's who I want to be. He was a construction worker and he would never go to work because he wanted to catch the ahi. So we decided to give it a shot and make it a business. This is all that's left of our first boat. I was wondering, like, it's kind of a weird looking door. <laughs> this boat now rests at the bottom of the ocean. We still got the door. Ahis are still coming through it. Do you have a couple favorites that you could recommend for us? Yeah, so we are really popular for our lunatic poke. That's our version of spicy ahi. I am not a mayonnaise eater. So so we decided to take the mayonnaise out and add a few other things in there. Could you give us a little snapshot of what is in that sauce? Oh, if I tell you, I gotta kill you, man. <laughs> uh, talking to a couple of assassins, I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna rub them the wrong way. This is a miniature van that we're sitting in the trunk of because I assassins not have any sit-down space in their retail no. space. You take your bowl and you eat it anywhere. I feel like I'm channeling Josh's story right now. I got sounds of construction. All I wanna do is eat fish. Let's do it. So, so first, the lunatic. Yes. Looks like cartoon rubies. Little sea jewels. Look how juicy they look. It looks extremely juicy. I can't do much more talking because I'm salivating so much. Cheers. Oh. oh my god. Yeah. It's so tender. It just like melts. This is the real tuna melt. Yeah. This is the most luxurious texture I've ever experienced in food. I feel like a bear eating this. It's like I've never had real Oh my god. Food. It's like when you watch sports and you're just watching it from your couch. Then when you go to the game and you're courtside, you actually see and feel the vibes of the place. Courtside with a bad fish? No hesitation. <laughs> We're gonna do Hawaiian style, which is our traditional poke. Hawaiian salt, limu is the seaweed. Yeah. Throw white onions in the inomona, a little bit of Hawaiian chili peppers, and then coat that with sesame oil. Mix everything around, get the rice in your bowl, top it on top, and then that's your final poke bowl. So here we have the Hawaiian style. Yes. Oh, God, what you have, have you done? This tastes like you're standing on a beach and just grab the tuna out of the water. You got all this seaweed stuck to it. Oh my God. I wanna try all of them. My mind is being rewired right now. Like, the things I knew about raw fish and the taste that you could experience. Stupid good. I wish I didn't know about this. We flew too close to the sun. On the wing of a tuna. Oh. We use every bit of the ahi in this shop. Hawaiians are taught to use your resources and steward them well. We catch only sizable fish, one hook, one line at a time. I'm not thinking about a paycheck for me. I'm thinking about putting food on the table for many generations. So bones and collars, that's usually trash parts of a fish, you yeah. could say. It's not trash stuff, that's gold. But everyone's favorite is the bag of bones. It's when we get a paper lunch bag and we just fill it to the top. You just munch down on that? Is it is like yeah, the totally. whole thing it's edible like at that point? You want to suck meat off of those bones. Yeah, okay. it's exactly like a chicken wing. That bone Bone meat. Bone <laughs> talking me. about. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea this was gonna happen. Imagine the size of this thing, you know? That's like that Whoa. on you. Oh! How should we attack this? People just like to stick their finger in it. Oh, jeez. Dip it in and you eat it. Okay. All right. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That is ripped meat off of a fish's neck head. Oh, dude, it's mm. so fatty and soft inside. This oh. is where the flavor lives. Yeah. Right off the bone. Now I feel like a bear. Can you imagine if bears knew how to deep fry fish? <laughs> Last thing I want to talk about is the Aloha spirit. Uh-huh. It's about the family. 
about the neighbors. Can I eat that outside all. of this? Yeah. I'm trying to have a sentimental moment with Sorry. you, bro. I gotta find out if I can eat it. We got Leonard's Bakery. My roommate is from Hawaii, and he said we should eat here. Oh, man. Boom. Oh. Oh. oh no. It's like eating a thick cloud. It's delicious. I can live here. Fish, fish fat. The mucus producing hagfish can fill a two gallon bucket with mucus in minutes when disturbed. What? Yeah. How big is this fish? We'll try to find a picture and put it here. Boop. Can you imagine producing gallons of liquid from oh, your body okay. just when you're annoyed? And I guess that's kind of like what crying is, but if you cried gallons. And it was thick and viscous. Yes, great usage of viscous. Now we're going to a place called NW Restaurant. It is a husband-wife duo. I wonder if they consider each other a catch. I'm Michelle Carr Uyoka, pastry chef, owner of MW Restaurant. My name is Wade Uyoka, chef and co-owner of MW Restaurant. I love the fork MW, it's awesome. Her cousin actually designed it for us. That was one of the very few things we agreed on. <laughs> what kind of restaurant is MW Restaurant? We do Hawaii regional cuisine. Hawaii is made up with so many ethnic backgrounds, so we try to put that all together on a plate. You mainly focus on the dessert, or do you cover other areas oh, of Oh, no, 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 only dessert. And I think that makes it a happy marriage, too. The Come front on. is his. <laughs> The back is my side. Today we're making a dish with this beautiful naga that just came in today. It's a long tail red snapper. We take the filet, season with salt, we take blocks of kirimochi, and then we grate it. It looks like shredded coconut. Coat the fish, and then sear it in a medium to hot pan for about three to four minutes on each side. We place the fish right on top of the some noodles, and then three small piles of banchan vegetables, kimchi, and bok choy, and then some pickled namasu. My mom used to make a deep fried mochi. Growing up, it was one of my favorite things. That's kind of the inspiration of this dish. Do you serve the dish now? When your mom comes in the restaurant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what does she think about that? She loves it. This is delightful. Did you ever think you'd have mochi as a crust for a fish? No, but <laughs> now I'm thinking, what else can we crust with mochi? Probably anything. This is an unnamed cocktail, by the way. They, they yeah. say, they're still in development. It's yuzu, ginger. Some kind of Japanese whiskey highball. Mm. And a local honey. Local honey is what they called me in high school. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, mom. that's delicious. In the world of crunchy stuff, there are all types of different kinds of crunch. You got your potato chip crunch, you got your carrot crunch. I would most relate this crunch to the crunch of popcorn. Initially a crunch and then super soft all the way through on the inside. I'm gonna dip this in the sauce. Slightly Ooh. sweet, slightly salty. This is just like very slight. Yeah, this is delightful. The snapper flesh itself is like pads of butter. The way it flakes apart, yeah, fish butter. I think fish is the perfect meat. Yes. It's so tender and light. Also, did you see the raw snapper? Yes. It's a beautiful creature. People think horses are beautiful. That is a red ocean dragon. I'm not gonna forget this moment. I'm gonna be telling my kids and my grandkids about this mochi crusted fish. And I'm going home tomorrow and I'm gonna try to make this myself. Pop this whole thing in your mouth. You want some sauce? Here, take a little bit of sauce. Drizzle, man. Drizzle. <laughs> yeah. His mind's gonna be blown. Yeah. Time for dessert. For dessert, you'll be having tropical creamsicle brulee, coconut tapioca on the bottom, which is a play off of the Filipino dish, halo halo. And then we top it off with tropical fruits, lily koi kan ten, my version of a gummy bear. I loved gummy bears growing up. So I take the lily koi, and then there's a French dessert called pet de fruit. It's a little bit softer, not as chewy and gummy. So I combine the two together to make that texture of a gummy bear. Lily koi sorbet, lily koi custard, and then we burn it with a thin sugar cookie. So it all comes together. Creme brulee might be my favorite dessert. It's neck and neck with tiramisu, and carrot cake, and gelato. <laughs> I'm ready to break the crust. It's over. Yeah. One fish, two fish. Screw fish, eat dessert. <laughs> oh. oh my god. The sorbet inside is so good. I like how you have double every texture. You have something chewy, and something slightly different chewy. The gummy bear cube and the tapioca ball. It's like a gummy bear, but it doesn't have like the, the part of a gummy bear that sticks your teeth together. I used to behead gummy bears as a kid. Oh yeah, you gotta behead it. And then you swap the heads with the different colors. Oh, I didn't do that. <laughs> This is one of the best things we've ever had. 
Chef Michelle's mother hand bakes her grandmother's recipe. Cookie cheers. That's what I'm talking about, cheers. That's really good. You got a fish fact for me? Fish fact! Actually, it's more like fish trivia. Although many fish species have not been discovered yet, right now, how many fish species do you think there are? 50,000. You're in the right ballpark. The answer is 27,300. That's a lot of fish species. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ocean is giant. It's like the rest of the world is living on a one-story building, and the ocean is a thousand-story building. Fish on every floor. Now we're on our way to Chef Mavro. What are we eating there? Fish. My name is Georges Mavro Talacitis, Chef Mavro for short. Our executive chef, Jeremy Shigekane, is going to help me in the kitchen to carve the fish. What type of cuisine do you do here at Chef Mavro? As a French chef in Provence, I was one of the rare restaurants featuring Provence cuisine from the local market. Everybody was cooking French. Yeah. I never cooked classic in my life. And when I arrived here, I did a original cuisine from the local market. At this time, 20 years ago, every ingredient in the tourist place was from the mainland. Really? Yeah. Why? Even fish. I mean, they were using fish from Mexico. <laughs> I got that. Tell us about the onaga that you use in this. It's the best snapper on the island. We just received the fish mm. from the fisherman. It's gorgeous. I took my inspiration from uh, recipes that we do in Provence. We mix the salt with egg white and a little bit flour to make sure the salt keep together. The tea leaf goes on a bottom, spinach on top of the tea leaf to steam the spinach at the same time. Fish on top of the spinach and the top is protected by the natural skin of the fish. Right. Is the tea leaf a local ingredient as well? Yes, yeah, the tea leaf is, you know, the hula dance when there are leaves as yeah. a skirt, yeah. this is tea leaf. That's the link. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. After that, I did a very Provence sauce. Tomato, shallot, lot of garlic, mm. a ton of olive oil. In Provence, we put a mix of herbs. Here, I had ogo, it's a seaweed. Oh. And suddenly, my sauce of vierge, which to me was a semo semo, become atomic bomb. <laughs> boom. <laughs> Is there a recommended beverage that we should have along with it? Yes, of course. It's a funny question because I've been here for so long trying to sell rosé to my guests. Yeah. And nobody say, What's that? This is white sea fandel? <laughs> and uh, no, this is rosé from Provence, from my hometown. <laughs> it's amazing with the onaga, with a combination of seaweed and tomato. So we serve with rosé. From Provence, of course. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Divine. Oh. Ready to have this fish? Ooh. <laughs> Do you always serve the fish? When I can. Sometimes we get too busy, I cannot escape. <laughs> so this guy. This guy is a... All right. Oh. You cannot eat that. It's the only salt. <laughs> Even if you want, I'm not going to keep it. <laughs> Enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I did not expect any of this. You literally create a shell to cook the fish in. I honestly don't know what's happening here with my nose. Fish is in there, but there's so much more happening. Cheers. Cheers. What? What? More unexpected things are happening right now. I need to take another bite. <laughs> okay, well, I have to say it's extremely delicious. I've never had a more perfectly cooked fish. I don't understand what is happening. My expectation going in. I was like, okay, I know it's gonna taste like a tomato with leaf and fish. Put it in my mouth, and it's not at all that. Here's my impression of it. And this is gonna sound ridiculous because I know that we just interviewed a Frenchman who moved to Hawaii, yeah. but when I eat this fish, the first thing I think of is a French man who moved to Hawaii <laughs> and made the most delicious fish he could. That's what it tastes like? I don't know. The seaweed inside the sauce is blowing my mind. It all feels like one delicious, mind-melting and heartwarming texture. It kind of just tastes like that's how this fish always tasted. Yeah. I'm okay. trying to think of like what three things just perfectly come together. I would also never guess spinach was going to end up in no. here. Oh, oh. <laughs> that looks like a delicious biscuit that's covered in sugar right yeah. now. I want to eat it, but I know Chef told us not for taste buds near that. It's amazing. It just makes sense. It's like Stardust. The movie with Robert De Niro? Exactly. It seems crazy, but then once you experience it, it's like that's the only way it could have happened. I know this is the end of the fish video, but we're here where the fish get made. <laughs> One of my favorite episodes that we've ever done. Yeah, me too. Ayo.
Who's your worthy winner? MW Restaurant, they just do such a good job there. Like, yeah. everything is delicious. But my worth it winner, Chef Mavro. No way. Chef Mavro's dish is the story of a man who moved to Hawaii, fell in love with the island, and then created a masterpiece on a plate. Wow. I think you just want to move here. I just want to be Chef Mavro. What was your worth it winner? The poke. Head assassin. Whoa. Yeah. They killed it. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> poke in general. Yeah. doesn't really make sense to me other than here. If you're in Ohio and eating poke, the cost of freight, it's not sustainable. You say freight? Freight. Oh, freight. 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 <laughs> Is it not freight? You said freight. The cost of scaring the fish to death. <laughs> Adam, who's your worth of winner? The creme brulee. Michelle's creme brulee. You know, I actually haven't touched the ocean yet since I've been here. I'm going first. Is it warm? <laughs> oh. Oh, it's nice. I'll see you in the next episode. What are we doing next? Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. I want to be a fisherman. You ever fish? A couple times as a kid. A lot more crabbing, though. I don't know if that counts as fishing. Are a crab fish? No, they're not. You catch a fish, you capture a crab. Oh, yes.